Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk to you guys about how to set up your NAS for video editing. Today we're looking at Synology NAS more precisely. We're looking at the DS1621XS Plus, a 10GBE enabled NAS, but the majority of the steps that we're going to go through today can apply to pretty much any Synology NAS. The only difference being the amount of throughput you're going to get and ultimately how suitable they're going to be for video editing. Now, Today we're going to be going through all the steps on setting the device up and the best ways to interact with it. There'll be a little talk at the end about backing up that you don't have to listen to if you don't really want to. And we are looking, you know, majoritively at 10 GBE solutions here. We're looking at how to connect, in this case, a Thunderbolt system, this is a Thunderbolt laptop, to this 10 GBE NAS. We've got the laptop just here, we've got the NAS here, and we are going to be using a Thunderbolt to 10 GBE adapter. There are several in the market. Um, I'm, I currently use the Sonnet Solo 10G. This is a 10 GBE to Thunderbolt 3 connection and is bus powered. This will be powered by your laptop system. It's not essential. If you have a 10 GBE system or a 2.5 or a 5 GBE system, or you're buying a Thunderbolt NAS or something like that, then you won't need to use that. But in order to interact with the NAS at a greater speed than that of traditional ethernet networks, I will be using that adapter and I'll highlight it a little bit throughout the video. But before we go any further, why would a person want to edit video on a NAS? What are the advantages of editing on a NAS? Why wouldn't you just edit on your PC system? Why didn't you just use that or your Mac system? Well, there's a few reasons for that. First and foremost, you have more space to play with on a NAS. Um, the majority of the time, if you are using a PC or Mac system, the faster your internal storage, the chances are the less capacity you have. Traditional hard drives, generally the largest amount of storage that a person can get these days, aren't the fastest. Normally giving you somewhere between 160 to 250 or 60 megabytes per second throughput for a single drive. That is not great for video editing, given the size of 4K files and even 1080p these days. And editing on the fly needs a certain amount of data to be held by the system and its cached memory um, in order to edit those files. Um, if you do have faster media in SSD like SATA or NVMe SSDs, you can get four or 500 megs all the way up to 1200 and 1500 megabytes per second. But they are, you know, exhaustively expensive by comparison and their capacities are much, much smaller. Generally hitting the maximum of 2 to 4 TB generally. And you pay a lot of money for those small storage areas. And given that the average 4K movie will be gigabytes in the double or even treble figure sometimes, it's just not viable long term. Next, uh, there are advantages to utilising a NAS in your editing environment to reinvent your workflow so that you can edit via your machine on the NAS, but also use the NAS for distribution, for sharing to end users, or having people packing the metadata, the descriptions, the thumbnails, all of that kind of stuff can all be done remotely on the NAS, and the NAS can be used to share the content with your intended audience, be it you know, uh, clients and stuff like that, or larger scale, more global uh, sharing of your media. And NAS allows you to reinvent that workflow, and that still goes for share, not just sharing, but backing up the data as well. Things like uh, um, upgrading ports and connections on a NAS is also an option that your system can remain the same with Thunderbolt adapters changing all the time. But later down the line, you can increase the network connections thanks to PCIe cards and improve your connection from 10 GBE to 20 GBE to 40 GBE. All of those are options that become available with link aggregation or whole upgrades, which mean that when you do edit on a NAS, your PC system or your Mac system, portable or desktop, can largely remain the same, but you can upgrade this device to get faster and faster and faster. Um, and finally, things like non-linear editing or NLE, mean that when you're editing files on the NAS, you aren't actually changing the original files. And you can create revisions and snapshots and long-term um, versions of files that allow you to revert back to previous uh, versions of a file or a video file, be it raw or completed product, in a way that a lot of software like Adobe, like Final Cut and um, uh, Elements and Resolve and stuff like that, they do within their software but the minute you close the project, you lose a lot of that history. And NAS lets you maintain a lot of that historical data to revert to. But 
that's why I would recommend editing on a NAS. It's not perfect, you know, editing on your local system is probably easier, but what I will argue that although it's easier to edit locally, afterwards things get more complex and messy. Editing on a NAS can save a lot of time. But let's go ahead and talk about how to set it up. We're going to switch to the screen in a second. I'm sorry about the noise, by the way. They've got this, we've got two fans on here and drives, and we have the GPU fan on my laptop humming up a little bit there. But the first thing you're going to need to do, unsurprisingly, is set up your NAS for the first time. I've done loads of guides on setting up QNAP and Synology and more. Um, you can just look around straight away and find the perfect way to set up the NAS for you. That re uh, I recommend making sure, one, you've got the latest firmware on your NAS, on your Synology. Second, make sure you've got the right RAID configuration because the RAID configuration on your system will massively dictate the overall top speed. Things like the CPU and the memory inside your Synology NAS will play their part. But if you have the right RAID, that's multiple disks all together being read and written to, across the whole board it increases your overall performance speeds now different raid configurations give you different advantages in terms of fail safe raid 5 for example can be utilized with at least three drives and you can add lots and lots and lots of drives depending on the size of your system and a raid 5 allows you to have one drive of failure what that means is if one of your discs dies or it breaks because nothing's perfect then the system will still be able to rebuild the data that was on that disk utilizing the RAID. So make sure you choose the right RAID for you. There are double disk RAID systems, there's triple disks, and Synology have their very own thing called SHR, which is a hybrid RAID system that allows you to mix and match drives. There's lots of options, and it's recommended you go for the one that best fits your needs. You can find it a lot of my setup guides already online. So do make sure that you set the right RAID for you, both in terms of protection and in terms of performance, because the more drives you add to your RAID, the higher the speeds are going to become. With every drive that you uh, hard drive you add, it will increase the overall speed by somewhere between one to two hundred megabytes per second, depending on the speed of your device. So, if you put one drive in, you'll be lucky to get two hundred megs. After that, you can get to three or four hundred. You can get to five or six hundred. You can get to seven, eight hundred, so on and so forth. Now. Once you've set up your NAS for the first time, you've installed the firmware, you've created an account that's in your name, so um, you normally will create an admin account. I recommend creating a second account, um, not the admin account for editing. Create a second user, which I'll show you in just a moment. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to flick to the screen now to a readily set up Synology NAS. And I'm going to walk you through what I would do when setting up a NAS for video editing. Let's flick to the screen. So as you can see here, we're on the desktop of my PC here. Now, if you've installed and set up your Synology NAS for the first time, chances are you have downloaded a tool called Synology Assistant. This is a completely free application that's available from Synology for setting up your NAS for the first time. I would recommend installing this tool because it will come useful later. The next thing you need to do if you are going to be using a Thunderbolt 2 10 GBE adapter or any kind of network adapter, then I recommend connecting that now. Once you've connected it, or in my case, as you can see, if we go into my network settings, if you've connected your Thunderbolt adapter, it will appear here. So as you can see right now, the Thunderbolt adapter is connected to my system and it has registered a connection. If we go over to the Synology Assistant and click search, not only will this PC find all the different Synology NASes in my network environment, it also finds this NAS here, which is on a very different IP to the other ones. Now, this is one that is being connected via that 10 GBE adapter. If we go to the status here, we can see the details. The IP there, starting 169, is available there, the 169 IP there. So, as you see, it has found that NAS via that adapter. This adapter will provide me with 10 gigabits per second uh, connection. So if we go in there, you can see it's a 10 gigabit connection, which means via this adapter, I can get around about 1,000 megabytes per second maximum. There are greater adapters as well, so do stay, you know, stay tuned for those. So now you've identified that you can connect to the NAS, connect to the NAS as you normally would, because what we need to do next is create a shared folder. 
Now it is worth highlighting the method I'm going to show you today is not the only way to edit video on a NAS. There are numerous methods uh, involving client applications or iSCSI targets that will allow you to edit on a NAS. But what I will say is the method I'm going to show you today is by far the easiest. This is the way to have a folder on your local PC or Mac system that is easy and has the kind of visibility to your software of that of a normal localized folder. So now we've logged into the NAS here, we want to go ahead and create that extra user. Head into the control panel here. From there, go to user and then create a brand new user. We're going to call this user video edit and we can give them a name. We have to give them a password and then we can, you know, add an email address if we want to send them notifications and more. So we've created this user here. Click next. Then we say what their privileges are in terms of which group they're in. Now, if you've already created users, then that's good. If you've created power users or administrators, I want this user to be an admin user, but you can add new groups. Next, you can say which shared folders this user is going to have access to. So we're going to get to that in a moment, but as you can see, I've got lots of shared folders as it is. So we're just going to click that they've got read and write access to everything. Next, you can see that there will be a storage quota, but at the moment, this user has uh, unlimited storage on the NAS, but you can adapt that later. And you can also say which apps they can access. Depending on if you're going to be running backups, you might want to add some of these applications. So I'm going to add the backup tools there, file station, and that should be about it. Maybe Synology Drive as well. Then click Next. You can say if they're going to have a speed limit, if you want that user to not use up all the network bandwidth, but that's about it. So now you've created this user, this new user video edit. So now what we want to do before we go into the video edit account is create that shared folder. So next we want to head into file station. From file station, head up to the top and find the folder create. Go down and create new shared folder. Give this folder a name. We're going to call this one Video Archive. We're also going to call it just Video Arc because I've forgotten how to spell archive like a tool. You can enable the recycle bin if you want. I'm going to disable it for a future video, but I recommend you have it there just to be on the safe side. Then click Next, and you can ask whether you want it to be encrypted. An encryption key will allow that this folder will only be accessible internally by the NAS or externally with anyone who has a key. If you want to mount that shared folder and you encrypt it, the system is going to download a key locally to your PC to allow you to do it. I'm not going to encrypt it though for this video. Next, you can enable um, integrity checks of that data to happen now or later, and you can even enable limitations on the amount of storage available. After that, click Apply, and it will create this new shared folder. Make sure that this folder can be utilized by the video edit uh, account that you have created. But bear in mind that if you've made them an admin like I have, they will always have access anyway. But go ahead and click Read Write just to be on the safe side. As you see, we've now created that shared folder. And the next thing we want to do is create a folder on our local PC or Mac system that allows us to uh, edit on the NAS with our chosen video editing software. Head back to the Synology Assistant tool, find your NAS, right click, and then select the option that says Map Drive. From here, log in with your credentials that you created for this NAS, or use the credentials of the user we created. So if we go back into control panel, we can see if we go into users that the video edit user has the power to connect. So from here, we can go back into mapping that network drive, giving them their name, entering that password, and then logging in to that folder. From here, we can scroll down to the available mapped network drives and find the folder, in this case, Video Arch. 
click next and assign this drive a letter. Now things may be slightly different for Mac users, but it should be largely the same. I'm going to give this drive the letter Q. You can say that you always want the system to reconnect every time you boot up the PC or Mac. And then from there, it will ask you to once again add your login credentials so the system knows what to do long term. And that will open your new mapped network drive. So if we go into the My PC folder, you'll see on your own localized PC that a new folder has become available on your desktop PC in the My Computer section. So now you can interact with this NAS just like you would any folder on your computer and it has its own letter. Now what we need to do next is head over to our editing software of choice and there are several options available. If we go into my program section here the first one we can go ahead with is Adobe Premiere Elements. From here what we need to do is make sure that the system uh, aligns all of its default caching and default um, video footage from the NAS. Now as you carry on your library will get larger on the NAS. If we go ahead and create a new video clip it will ask us to add the media whereupon we can go straight into that folder and then it will set it as a default. Go ahead there it will then say where you want it to find that media and that is where it will appear. If we go into other applications so going back down to the bottom and this time we go for DaVinci. So from here we go into Black Magic, go into DaVinci Resolve, close Adobe Premiere. And from here you can then look at your mapped network drive within this application. Remember you can open existing DaVinci Resolve um, templates and saved projects and then reassign within DaVinci where the assets are based. So for example, we can go ahead and let's shut that down. We won't put the update in. We've got some videos we did for a previous uh, piece of content. But from here, you can either open an existing uh, project or a brand new one. If you go for a new project, we'll go ahead and leave it called Project 1. It will then reopen. And from here, you can just head straight into the media pool and add brand new media if you choose. You can go up here and import projects, import uh, where you want all of your data to live, and all of those options are available here. You can go for a default path and change the default paths as you see fit, and again, select your new Q drive or whatever you deci uh, decided upon, and it will appear here. And from here, you can go ahead and edit files over the network just as you would locally. I've done performance testing on this NAS already, showing you guys 4K editing in PowerDirector as well as DaVinci and Adobe. So that is how you can set about accessing your library via your programs. Also bear in mind if you go into the preferences section, a lot of the time you can change a lot of the defaults to make sure they head and pull directly from the NAS. If you're looking to transfer files from your local machine to the NAS, there's other options available to you too. So the obvious first one is of course dragging and dropping files directly into here. You can treat it just like any other folder, so you can go in a folder like I will here in the folder test files, you can select several files, right click, click copy, scroll down, go into the folder you created, and then quite simply paste them in and then it will copy those files over and as you can see I'm achieving speeds already of well in excess of 700 megs there thanks to the 10G connection on this NAS. Now on top of that if you don't want to do it that way you can go ahead back into the test files folder there open file station and as you can see some of the files I've just drag and dropped will appear and what you can do via your web browser is drag and drop the files for your NAS directly into the user interface. Although this is the least user friendly of all the options as generally it will make a slower job of transferring those files over as you see here. The last and probably the most streamlined way of 
sending files over. Let's exit these projects. He's using the proprietary Synology tools. I recommend using Synology Drive. Synology Drive will create a local folder on your PC that can be synchronized for backups and you can synchronize that folder of your archive on the PC using that software and I recommend you take advantage of those. And that's really it. That is how to set up a connection and edit on your NAS for video um, post-production and effective video editing over a NAS. Before we go though, it is worth highlighting that a number of you aren't taking backup seriously enough. When you are running lots of these applications and when you are editing files on the fly, it's easy to forget that if the files you are creating here on your local PC live on the NAS, the result is going to be that you don't have a backup because the only copy of those files is going to be on the NAS. So if you are going to be utilizing network attached storage for video editing long term, it's strongly recommended that you have a multi-tiered backup strategy in place. Unfortunately, I don't have an internet connection here to show you, but it is recommended that you install tools such as Synology Drive to synchronize with your local PC and that of your NAS, or as a much higher recommendation, tools like Hyper Backup, which allow you to back up the content of your NAS to the cloud on third-party cloud providers on other NAS with rsync or on another remote Synology or a local USB drive. All of these are options and will allow you to create a multi-tiered backup strategy that runs simultaneously while you're editing on the NAS and having a rigid multi-tiered backup strategy is key. But this has been how to edit video files on your Synology NAS over 10 GBE. All of the steps today can be used on a PC or Mac system and should be relatively similar. Do remember that if you are setting up your NAS to make sure that the IP that you're utilizing is static. So when you set the NAS up, you'll be given the opportunity to set up the network connection. It's not essential, but if ever you disconnect your NAS, sometimes it can change on the network. So a little tip moving forward is to make sure your IP is not dynamic. You need a static IP. Another tip is to make sure that your MTU, otherwise known as Jumbo Frame, is set to 9000. This allows the full connection of these devices to be achieved. As you see here, MTU on the Synology is at 9000. If we go to the network, we can go into properties, and from here, click config, move the tabs along to, um, where is it, advanced, and find jumbo packet. From here, I've got it set to disabled, but you want it at 9000. Once you click OK, the driver will restart, so the NAS will lose connection temporarily. But this allows both systems to be utilized in the full bandwidth available for those connections and comes thoroughly recommended. But nevertheless, this has been how to edit videos on your Synology NAS and how to take advantage of 10 GBE while doing it. Hopefully there's a guide in the description that will tell you more about how to do this in a far more pictorial fashion. And if you have any difficulties doing this, head down to NAS Compares to my free advice section. I will be able to help you. It is only manned by myself. So I apologize if my reply times are a little slower, but I will say that it will give you free impartial advice to help you set up your NAS for video editing. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed this. Click subscribe to learn more. Visit the guides at Span for your NAS device and I'll see you next time.